if the FPPC comes back and says that his vote doesn't count, where are we at then? The contract would be invalid, unenforceable, and they could take some other action I don't want to. On the city or on Mr. Arrepo uh, Tem? Oh. Yeah. Okay. So Garcia's up. Greetings, everyone. This is the Gardening Snail of Livingston, California, just trying to keep the community informed and local government as honest as possible. Any editorial content is my own as a resident of Livingston and does not represent the views and opinions of the City Council or the City of Livingston and certainly does not represent any kind of legal advice. In previous videos, I talked about how we suddenly lost the second of two police chiefs in less than two years and the litigation that resulted and how the current city manager signed a contract with the sheriff's department for a replacement in the short term, but could not get the contract extended on the first try in April. A second try was attempted on May 19th, 2022, which initially was going to fail by a 2-2 vote until the mayor pro tem, who had recused himself, jumped back into the meeting and voted in favor of another short-term extension until the end of September. This against the advice of the city attorney. Just a few minutes later, a notice of a special meeting to be held at 8 p.m. on the next evening was posted. On the agenda was to repeal what had been done the evening before and try to do it again the right way this time around. This time, a contract extension until the end of September was passed without the Mayor Pro Tem's participation. Now let's take a look at what that cost us. I want to start by pointing out I'm trying to capture as many of the associated charges for both the May 19th and the May 20th meetings. As you can see here in this section of the invoice, there are redactions that occur within this time frame. I have no way of knowing what lies hidden behind these redactions. The best I can do is look at what is not redacted and go from there. There is 1.3 hours of conferring with client here. While I might be justified in thinking it applies to the meetings, I can't be as positive about this one as I am about this item on the 20th for 2.2 hours of conferring with client regarding conflict issue. Because that goes to the very heart of the dispute between the Mayor Pro Tem and Tom Hallinan, which was, since the Mayor Pro Tem is a member of the Sheriff's Department and the contract involved would be with the Sheriff's Department, did the mayor pro tem have a conflict of interest? And if so, what would happen to a contract he voted on? Which leads us to this entry about conflict of interest violation. So what happens during the May 20th meeting is the council revokes the contract that had been adopted at the May 19th meeting and then approves a new contract that would run until the end of September, at which time they're going to have to go through this process all over again. Unless a miracle occurs in the meantime and Livingston finds someone competent enough to take over the position of police chief. And crazy, no, I mean self-assured enough to want to even take the job given all the political chaos that has been going on around here. Anyway, the May 20th meeting lasted about 1.3 hours long. We'll take the five hours charged by partner Goldstein, subtract the 1.3 hours for attending the meeting, and this is what we get. It's unfortunate we don't have any indication of just how much time partner Goldstein put into actually preparing for the meeting. Five minutes, 25 minutes, 35 minutes, we just don't know because everything was just smushed together in the five hour total. Now let's add in the evaluated, conferring, and attending. Now right here I'm going to point out that the May 19th meeting, at least the part we have a record of on video, was 1.3 hours long. 
However, Tom Hellenan charged a total of 4.9 hours for what he did attending that meeting. So what was he doing for the other 3.6 hours? Other than maybe some heated arguments, hurried phone calls, and off-camera discussions about whether or not a meeting the next evening was needed, given that the May 19th meeting ended at 7.16 p.m., and the May 20th meeting notice was posted about 8 p.m., which is 0.7 hours more or less worth of time, that still leaves about 2.9 hours worth of time unaccounted for. Travel? Office hours? Don't know, and no way to tell by looking at the way it was invoiced. I did notice that there was no visible charge from Doug White or Tom Hallinan for the time they spent at the May 20th meeting. Maybe it was already covered by the time bill on the 19th? I have no way of showing one way or the other, so I think your guess may be as good as mine at the moment. Add in the emails and the total is $2,540, over half of that for travel or other unaccounted for time. If you like what I do here, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Facebook. If you don't, well, thanks for hanging out this long anyway.